A nondescript building in outer Melbourne is not the type of venue you'd normally associate with the high-tech world of international track cycling. But when the chance to win an Olympic gold medal comes up only every four years, and this pursuit is for some a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, then the term leaving no stone unturned becomes a uniting mantra. It's here on the Monash University campus that Australia's crack men's pursuit squad were put through their paces recently in a wind tunnel facility, usually the scene of aircraft or car testing to improve aerodynamics. We come in here to obviously, you know, get our aerodynamics better on the on the bike and, and try to go faster. These days it's coming down to all the one percenters and you know and it's coming down to you know your clothing and, and aerodynamics so um, if we can come in here and get a few, you know, one percenters up our sleeve by doing something like this is, um, is what we're looking for. The facility's wind turbines send a 65 km per hour gale into the faces of these riders, with the simulated smoke blown over the riding formation to give a clear visual of just how aerodynamic the positions and equipment of the team are. The idea is simple, but to, to be able to engineer all of the equipment required, to be able to gain access to one of the biggest wind tunnels in the southern hemisphere, um, to be able to work in with the uh, Olympic preparation schedule that these athletes are going through, it's really hard to pull it all together. But, um, but it happened, and it's really cool. It's a sport where the difference between a gold or silver medal can come down to hundredths of a second on the track. But I think testing like this can make big inroads to, to, to improvements that, that make a difference. It, it might only be a half a second. It might only be a second and a half. Um, but because the composition is so tight, it, it's really important. For many years, Cycling Australia and the Australian Institute of Sport have worked in partnership to prepare our best cyclists to take on the world's leading riders. Ahead of the London Games, they've looked to broaden that partnership in an attempt to gain a crucial edge over their rivals. This is probably one of the, the bigger uh, projects we've embraced and it's had a lot of partners for Cycling Australia, AIS and Monash to work together. Times it gets tense, times it gets frustrating. Uh, but this is a great example. The, the Olympic Games are still looming and it's all come together and we're, we're actually getting the data out and we've done it in a very cost effective way and, and all the partners seem really happy. Behind the glass screen crunching the data are some of the best young minds in aeronautical engineering charged with giving our cyclists wings. And Australia's international rivals should be on guard because no one else will go to London armed with this sort of information. I think now we know probably better than anyone anywhere or certainly anyone that's going to tell us anything anywhere that we know more about exactly why when a rider assumes a position on the bike why they're getting, going to be able to reduce their drag. The tiny sensors under each wheel provide the key research data giving this squad the minute detail they need to shave valuable milliseconds off their race time. The information a session like this creates could give our cycling coaches information they need to make our pursuit team gold medal champions. Really, it really is a possibility that you can actually make a difference in these things. I couldn't make the same difference I can make you know, in rec making recommendations to a car manufacturer about how to reduce the drag that I can make to a cyclist. A cyclist is not an aerodynamic, you know, like a wing. But we, we've learned, the things we've learned, we really know exactly how the flow is going over them. We know how the flow should go over them. And we know that we're talking about really deltas in terms of drag coefficients that are going to make a big difference. Our men's pursuit team are already world champions after winning in Denmark last year and can also boast the world record time. But that will mean nothing if they can't claim gold in London. You look back in Copenhagen when we won, we won, you know, you're talking of 0.1 of a second of winning over four, four kilometres. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's coming down to them one percenters. And, you know, something like this is, um, I believe, gives us more than more than one percent. So um, to have the, you know, to be able to come in here and, and fine tune a lot of things in here I think is, um, is massive, massive for our group. At just 22 years of age, Jack Bobridge is already an elder statesman of our men's track cycling program and a veteran of the Beijing Games. As he watches the experts rallying around the team, he can't help but be amazed at their efforts. It's fantastic, you know, for the guys to, you know, the work they do off, off the bike um, for us is, you know, a lot of people don't see that, um, what goes on around. 
um, obviously the support as well. You know, we, we wouldn't be able to come in here without um, facilities like this and the AIS and the Sports Commission and all that. Um, you know, funding is is massive. You know, without the funding, we wouldn't would be you know we wouldn't be here today either, and we wouldn't have the um, the equipment that we've got either. So, um, you know. At the end of the day, we're the ones riding the bike and doing the training, but it's it's off the bike is massive. The down the mechanics, sports science, physio, everything. So it's um, without them, we definitely wouldn't be able to do it either. Going to these types of lengths to achieve international success is standard practice for the AIS in partnership with many game sports. But when it comes to the crunch in London, will this wind tunnel session have delivered the desired result? It's a great example of Australia. Um, showing the world and also showing ourselves that we can be very clever. Um, Australia is great at being clever in so many different ways. And when this team rolls onto the track in London, a group of students and professors almost 17,000 kilometres away in Melbourne will be riding with them. We're going to be there staying up all night for these ones now. I mean, we're up all night putting in this, uh, this facility, but you know, I think everybody, and, and it's not just us, and it's not just the PhD students, but I think everybody in the whole team in the wind tunnel are really excited about this and are really engaged with it. They all know exactly who's going to be riding. They're all going to be sort of, you know, working and rooting for the Australians.